Hello everybody. So in our series of lectures on basic electronics, we will move on to the next one. Before we do that, as usual let us recapitulate what we learned in the previous lecture. You might recall in the previous lecture we discussed about power amplifiers using transistors basically. Under that we discussed several subtopics like different types of coupling that is employed, how amplifiers are named after the type of coupling, RC coupled amplifiers or transformer coupling things like that and then we also looked at how transistors can be amplifiers can be classified on the basis of the frequency of op operation like low frequency amplifiers, high frequency amplifiers, RF amplifier, audio amplifier things like that and then when we wanted to look at the power amplifier characteristics then we had a discussion on the AC and the DC load lines on the characteristics and we also saw the different classes of operation class A, class B, class C and class D operation of power amplifiers and then finally we also took uh, some examples of the push pull amplifier where we have two different transistors uh, helping us to amplify the off signals the positive half and the negative half signals of the power amplifier. Now let us move on to the next lecture which is basically another configuration which is a very important configuration for future applications you would see in, uh, in the later uh, lectures that is the differential amplifier. People call it differential amplifier, some call it also difference amplifier, they mean the same. The, the amplifier amplifies the difference in signal between two inputs. Obviously, if you talk of difference, you must have two different inputs. So, the difference amplifier is a extremely popular amplifier and that it is that is the one of the reason why it has also been made use of in many of the modern integrated circuit uh, design. It can be looked at in a very simple way as you can see on the screen the difference amplifier basic configuration has got two transistors Q1 and Q2 and you see the they look very identical if you look, draw a line at the center you find both sides are symmetrical. You have one transistor Q1 on this side and Q2 on the opposite side you have two resistors RC1 and RC2 corresponding to the transistor Q1 and Q2 that is the collector resistors and you have one common emitter resistor the emitter resistor RE is common to both transistors. So the both the emitters are connected together and you have one single resistor RE connected here and this VEE is a negative voltage source supply. You have to connect to your minus terminal this to be connected to your plus terminal and you can also have your common terminal. So you can immediately see here we have a situation where we require not one single power supply as we have seen earlier in some of our lectures we require a dual supply because you require a plus voltage, minus voltage and a ground reference ground. So this dual supply comes out uh, because you require the amplification of both the signals the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle that is why you require a dual supply. So it is a very simple configuration if you look at it. The corresponding circuit symbol can be shown is shown on the right side you can see that it has got two inputs VI1, VI2 which are basically the inputs into the base of the transistors Q1 and Q2 and you have two output terminals VO1 and VO2 shown on the right side which are actually taken from the collectors of the two transistors Q1 and Q2. So the output one terminal from Q1 is taken as VO1 and the other terminal from the collector of Q2 is VO2. So uh, this is a two output terminals, two input terminals and you have a dual supply. This is a very characteristic uh, features of a difference amplifier or differential amplifier. There are different types of different amplifier combinations possible for you for us in the uh, transistor amplifier that is you can have the input signal applied to either input that means one of the input only while the other input is connected to ground. When you use this type of an amplifier it is called a single ended amplifier. 
input single ended input for example. If two opposite polarity input signals are applied the operation is referred to as double ended operation. You are applying voltages which are uh, oppositely uh, moving on the two input based uh, terminals of the two transistors Q1 and Q2 then it becomes double ended. If the same input sometimes what will happen the same input will be applied to both the inputs both VO, VI1 and VI2 will be connected to the same signal source then it becomes a common mode signal because the signal now is common to both the transistors or both the inputs therefore that is called common mode input. You can similarly have on the output side also so if I for example in a single ended operation a single input signal is applied however because the two emitters are connected together this single input signal will modify the corresponding emitter currents and the collector currents and this because the two emitters are connected this change in collector current emitter current of one transistor can also affect the collector current uh, emitter current and the collector current of the other transistor even though you are do not apply any signal to the second transistor I hope you understand what I am trying to say. Therefore, you would always be able to get output voltages from both the collectors even though you are applying the input voltage to only one of the base of the transistors. You can still get the collector output from both the transistors. So, this is single ended input and double ended output. In the case of double ended operation the two input signals are applied to both the inputs both the transistors and the difference and in input is what you get at the output at the collectors. So, this is one of the very important configuration that we will be talking again and again. Then third one is the common mode operation in this the one single input from a signal source is applied to both the bases both the input color terminals and therefore, what will happen is you will get two different polarities at the two different collectors. I hope you can see that I will try to explain this to you now and therefore, if I apply the same signal to both the inputs and if I take the output from both the collectors you would expect there should be no signal the signal should be 0 because one signal is in phase. So, it will if it is this input is increasing the output also will be increasing the other out, output is out of phase therefore, when the input is increasing that will be decreasing by the same amount and therefore, effectively the two will cancel each other and what you get at the output should in principle be 0 right. This is corresponding to the common mode operation, but however you know the in practical situations you would find the opposite, opposite signals do not completely cancel and a small signal will result because there will always be some differences in the transistor in the gains in the HFEs in the resistors and things like that. Therefore, it is not possible for us to exactly match the two transistors and the two outputs and therefore, you will always get some residual voltage which will be coming at the output of the collectors. So, but in principle the common mode gain that is the output voltage divided by the input voltage will generally be very small whereas, the differential gain will be large rather large by several magnitude for example, 1 or 2 magnitude it can even be for example, 200 the difference gain, but the common mode can be just few number 1 or 2 or something like that right. So, this ratio of the differential gain the difference that the gain for the differential input and the common mode gain is what is called very important parameter a physical figure of merit and that is called common mode rejection ratio. We will again refer to this at a later stage when we talk about operational amplifiers and all that. So, we have to remember three different things with reference to differential amplifier one is the differential gain the other is the common mode gain and the third one which is related to these two is a common mode rejection ratio which is just a ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain. Now, before I go further I will try to quickly explain to you how you get two different polarities. So, for example, if you now refer to the picture that you see on the screen 
uh, you can give an input signal let us say if I give an input signal due to which the base current is increasing. So, if the base current is increasing here you know in a common emitter amplifier the collector current also will increase the emitter current will increase the collector current will increase if the collector current increases there will be a more drop from the VCC given by the ICRC component here and therefore this voltage when this base voltage increases the collector voltage decreases. So, this relationship we have already seen in the basic amplifier common emitter amplifier situation and therefore you can realize that there is a 180 degrees phase difference between the input and the output when I give the input at the base and take the output from the collector of the same transistor. Now what happens when I take the output from the second amplifier but the signal is given to the same base but I try to look at what happens to the voltage at the collector point of the second transistor. So when I increase the voltage at the base you can realize the voltage at the collector will increase but what will happen to the voltage at the emitter when this increases you can realize the emitter voltage also will increase because they are differing only by the VBE component here between the base and the emitter of the Q1 and therefore when the voltage at the base increases the voltage at the emitter also increases. When the voltage at the emitter increases it will this is connected to ground the second base is connected to ground for the second transistor but this voltage increases therefore the difference which is responsible for the emitter current will what will happen will actually decrease here between 0 and this. So this decrease will decrease the current and hence the collector current and therefore less voltage will be dropped across RC from VCC and therefore this voltage tend to increase I hope you are able to see that. So when the base voltage increases the emitter voltage also tends to increase and because this emitter voltage is also the emitter voltage of the other transistor the difference in voltage for the base bias between the base and the emitter will decrease and therefore there will be a decrease in the collector current in the second transistor that will correspond to an increase in the voltage at the output of the collector. So when I give a signal source here you find this signal will be in phase and this signal will be out of phase from the second collector. So when I take that output from both the inputs not with respect to ground but with reference to VC1 and VC2 terminals if I take an output you can imagine if they are perfectly matched I must get 0 they should cancel each other one is increasing the other is decreasing by the same extent and therefore the resultant should be 0. So that is what I was telling when you give input to one of the base and take the output from uh, differentially from the two collectors you will get almost 0 voltage at the output okay having understood that let us understand the DC bias condition first we will first consider the DC conditions and later on we will go into the AC condition by drawing the equivalent circuit and things like that in order to understand the working principles of the differential amplifier. So now you I will again uh, request you to look at the picture on the screen where you, you have the difference amplifier and you can see the current which is flowing through the emitter resistance RE can be easily calculated because on this side it is ground and we know this is VBE between the base and the emitter and you have minus VEE here. So I can consider or well, calculate what is a current that is flowing through IE okay. For that first initially we connect the two both the bases to ground VB1 is 0 VB2 is also 0 under this condition we will find out what is the uh, DC currents and voltages at the collector emitter and things like that. Now with the each base voltage at 0 volts the common emitter DC bias I already mentioned to you VE what is the voltage at v, the emitter VE is 0 volts that is at the base minus VBE and therefore it is minus 0.7 volts that is a the emitter is if you go back to this the emitter is above the ground okay by only VE and it actually it is uh, this is ground the current is flowing in this direction therefore this should be negative therefore it is more negative the emitter is more negative than the base and it is by the VBE and that is why we say it is minus 0.7 
because it is lower than the 0 volts minus 0.7. The emitter DC bias current therefore, we can calculate is nothing but I e is that voltage across the R e at the two ends of R e divided by R e. One end is at V e, the other end is at minus V e. So, V e minus minus V e by R e which is equal to V e minus V e, but V e we have seen is minus 0.7. Therefore, V e minus 0 0.7 divided by R e is the current I e. And if you assume that the two transistors are well matched, then you can see it is a see the I e is obtained by the two emitter currents. There is one common current coming from this transistor, the other emitter current coming from this transistor Q2, and they together they add and flow as I e through R e. So, if we know I e, I know this and this will have to be half of that I e by 2 and I e by 2 because of symmetry. If these currents, emitter currents, individual emitter currents of the transistors are I e by 2, then the individual em collector currents will also should be almost equal to I e by 2 because they are all I c is almost equal to I e. Therefore, I c is equal to I, b, I e by 2, the two collector resistors are all uh, currents also I e by 2. So, if we know the collector currents, and the two transistors the resulting collector voltage at the two transistors can be easily evaluated. The Vc1 the voltage at the collector of the Q1 is equal to the voltage at the collector of transistor 2 Q2 Vc2 and that is Vcc minus ICRC that we have seen. We have to subtract the voltage drop due to RC from Vcc and that will be the voltage at the collector. So, V C C minus R C I C in this case I C is I E by 2 therefore, V C C minus I E by 2 into R C. So, it is possible for us given a configuration calculate the emitter current, the collector current and the voltage at the emitter volt, emitter as well as the collector that is what we mean by D C bias condition. If you get all the voltages and currents we are we are clear about the D C condition of the amplifier. So, let us take a simple example I have given a small illustration here to calculate the DC voltages and currents in terms of the numerical values. So, uh, I have assumed that we have a 9 volts battery for the positive and my 9 volts for the negative therefore, it is a dual supply with plus 9 and minus 9 with reference to ground and the two collector resistors are 3.9 kilo ohms and each and the emitter resistance is also 3.3 kilo ohm as an example. So, now, what is a how do I understand the DC bias condition of this circuit? We can calculate I e as V e e minus 0 0.7 by R e V e e minus the voltage drop V, v e across this uh, divided by the resistor gives me the current. So, V e minus 0 0.7 by R e V e is 9 volts 9 volts divided minus 0 0.7 by R e is 3.3 .3 kilo ohms if I substitute these values I find the current I e is approximately 2.5 milli amperes. So, I know I e if I know I e I know the individual emitter currents they are half of that. So, I c is also half of that. So, I c is equal to I e by 2 which is 2.5 milli amperes by 2 and therefore, it is 1.25 milli ampere. So, if you know I c then you can also calculate the V c the collector voltage V c is nothing but V c c minus I c R c that is 9 volts minus 1.25 milli ampere is the collector current multiplied by 3.9 kilo ohm that corresponds to about 4.1 volt. So, we know the V c, we know the I c, we know the I e, we know all about the D c conditions of the amplifier right. So, it is possible for us to understand the D c conditions. Now, let us move on to the A c operation of the circuit. So, when I want to look at the AC operation you know the power supply will have to be shorted. So, that means the plus VCC and minus VE they will all be grounded and so what you will get will be a modified equivalent circuit replacing the transistor with its equivalent model. We have taken the very simple model where you have the emitter resistance RE1 and you have got the current source beta times IB1. So, this rest of the things we have assumed to be very very small and therefore, the modified equivalent circuit is shown in the screen you have the V i 1 V i 2 the I b 1 and I b 2 are flowing into the base this R i 1 R i 2 are the internal resistance of the 
base emitter junction and you have the current sources beta i b 1 and beta i b 2 in the two collectors and you have the R c coming in parallel with that. So, you have the common emitters connected and you have a R e here therefore, at the end of the R e the power supply is ground. So, you have connected to ground this is the A c equivalent circuit we have seen similar uh, discussions we had when we discussed about RC coupled amplifier and H parameters and other AC equivalent models and things like that. So, I hope you can recollect that. Once we have this becomes a very simple circuit then we will be able to obtain the various parameters and also try to look at what is the amplification gain of this difference amplifier differential gain we can calculate. Okay, now, to calculate the single ended AC voltage gain we connect the render second transistor to ground the first transistor has got V i 1. So, the gain is and we also see that we are not taking the output from both the collectors, but from only one of the collector V o 1 alone we monitor. So, single ended input and single ended output that is what we are doing. So, V output by V i will be the gain for this difference amplifier. So, let us see how it happens how it comes. So, we apply the voltage loss for the input and then you can see I b 1 is equal to I b 2 is equal to I b because they are very symmetrical the base current should be same R i 1 should be equal to R i 2 should be equal to R i let us say in the two cases and since R e is very large that the in input circuit is modified now you have the voltage source you have the input resistance of the first transistor this is R e connected to ground and it is also connected to ground through the second resistor base emitter resistor. So, what you have is a simple source and two resistors in series if you ignore because R e is very large we can ignore the contribution compared to the small r. Small r will be few ohms we all know that I uh, 25 millivolts by I e that will be going to be very very small whereas, R e can be in several tens of kilo ohms and therefore, this is very large compared to this therefore, we can ignore when you do that you can see that V i 1 minus I b R i minus I b R i due to the second transistor should be equal to 0 by K V L Kirchhoff's law that loop equation. So, that from this we can find out the I b should be V i 1 by 2 R i from this equation we can simple algebra we can find out. So, you can also reasonably assume that the two transistors are close or almost matched therefore, beta 1 the current gain of q 1 is equal to beta 2 the current 2 the current current gain of the transistor second transistor and that I can call it as beta the common amplifier uh, current gain. So, I c will be beta times I b and that will be beta times instead of I b I can write V i 1 by 2 R i from the earlier discussion. So, what is the output voltage? The output voltage is I c R c the voltage across the R c due to the A c current and that will be beta times I b R c beta times I b is beta times V i 1 by 2 R i into R c. We all know what is that R i the R i small r i is nothing but beta times R e beta times R e where R e is the emitter resistance emitter base resistance. So, beta times R c divided by 2 beta times R e times V i and the beta will cancel leaving you with V output by V i the gain to be R c by 2 R e. So, this is a important relationship. So, in a case of a difference amplifier with voltage applied to one end and output taken from one collector the gain of the difference amplifier A v is equal to V output by V i 1 that is equal to R c by 2 R e where R c is a collector resistance connected to the two tra transistors and small r e is the base resistance 2 times small r e this ratio is what we get as the current gain. So, let us take a very simple numerical example again you have plus 9 volts minus 9 volts you have 47 kilo ohms at the two collectors and 43 kilo ohms for example, at the emitter R e and I impinge a small AC signal with a RMS value of 2 millivolts. 
So, let us now first calculate the DC bias calculation and then we will try to calculate what will be the AC gain. So, for DC bias conditions IE is equal to VE minus 0 0.7 by RE that is 9 volts minus 0 0.7 by 43 kilo ohm in this case and that is around 193 micro amperes. So, the IE is 193 therefore, the 2 emitter currents will have to be a half of them IE by 2 that is 193 by 2 that is 96.5 micro ampere and you can also see that will be the same as a collector current within uh, approximations. So, resulting in the collector voltage VCC is equal to VCC minus ICRC that is 9 volts minus 96.5 into 47k and what you get will be around 4.5 volts. So, the collector voltage is at 4.5 volts when the emitter is around uh, the, with a 0 bias this is the DC bias condition. So, the what is the value of RE small RE the RE is 26 millivolts divided by 0 0.965 that should be a millivolt here. So, that corresponds to 269 ohms. So, we saw that RE is usually very very small that is 269 ohms. So, what is the voltage gain? The voltage gain for AC can be calculated as V naught by V I 1 that is RC by 2 RE, RC is 47 kilo ohm 2 into RE is 269, 2 into 269 ohms that will be around 87. So, this is the voltage gain of the difference amplifier. So, if I tell you that the input voltage is 2 millivolts then the output voltage can be easily calculated as 2 millivolts multiplied by the gain that is 87 multiplied by 2 millivolt it is around 174.8 millivolt. So, around 175 millivolts so that is what you get as the output voltage. So, it is in, pos in principle possible for us to calculate what is the gain and the output voltage. Now, let us uh, <coughs> look at the uh, differential that is the double ended voltage gain. If I apply signals to both the inputs what will happen? The differential voltage gain magnitude will be beta times R c by 2 R i again it will not be very different you can try as a small exercise and therefore, both the collectors will give this voltage when I, when I want the differential gain you would find it is the difference in the two input voltages that I should take care and so V differential is V i 1 minus V i 2. So, I will calculate what is V i 1 by using R c by 2 R i and V i 2 and then I will find the difference that will be the differential voltage and that should be multiplied by the gain factor to get the output voltage V output. Now, I also mentioned to you there is a third configuration which is corresponding to common mode signals. So, you can have both the signals applied common to the two inputs single signal is applied to both the transistor inputs then what will happen what will be the gain of a common mode signal that is what we are interested in now. So, you can see in this picture the two bases are connected together by a single wire and the signal is connected to one of the base. So, the same signal therefore, in effect is connected to both the bases and you take the output from one of the collectors single ended output let us see what happens. Now, what is IB? IB is whatever voltage you give VI minus the voltage drop across the minus the voltage drop across the R i and R e combination right because R e is very small we are only taking the drop due to capital R e. So, V i minus 2 beta plus 1 i b into R e why 2 beta plus 1 i b beta plus 1 i b is the emitter current i e you know that 2 times i e because you are this this current will only be corresponding to one of the emitter and therefore, you have to multiply by a factor 2 if you want to calculate what is the current across the R e. Therefore, 2 times beta plus 1 into I b multiplied by R e gives me the voltage drop across R e. So, V i minus this voltage divided by R i gives me the base current right I hope you are able to see. 
So, there is a voltage here, this input voltage minus this input voltage gives me the voltage between the base emitter and that actually is a voltage generated by the internal resistance or Ri of the transistor. So, I B is equal to V i, we can multiply there is also I B here on this side, right side as well as left side. So, if I group them together and rearrange, you would find I B is equal to V i divided by R i plus 2 times beta plus 1 R e as you see on the screen. And what about the output voltage magnitude? The output voltage magnitude V output is equal to I C R C and that will be beta times I B R C that is equal to beta times I B is given by this expression, I will substitute that and multiply by R C. So, beta times V i R C divided by that denominator small r i plus 2 times beta plus 1 R e. So, this is what the output voltage is going to be for a common mode signal. So, what will be the voltage gain? The voltage gain for the common mode I represent as A C is equal to V output by V i that will be beta times R C divided by R i plus 2 times beta plus 1 R e. This is the expression that I get for the common mode signal. You can see that R e is very large. Previously, we got R c by 2 R e small r e. Now, we are getting beta times R c divided by the whole expression. So, because R e is very large, you will find this number could be very large than compared to 1 and therefore, the overall gain common mode gain will be very, very small. Right now, we will try to do a very simple numerical example. Again, we have taken the same circuit as before. You have the plus 9 volts and minus 9 volts and your RC values are 47 k and your RE value is 43 k and you get again the same 2 millivolts now, but connect to both the inputs common mode signal. So, the voltage gain magnitude we have already calculated AC is given by beta RC divided by a small RI plus 2 times beta plus 1 times RE and if I substitute a beta which is 75 given in the problem 47 kilo ohm as the RC, RI is 20 kilo ohm and 2 times beta plus 1 is 76, 2 times 76 into 43 k and if you calculate this it comes out to be 0 0.54. That means what? It is less than 1, that means nearly half. So, what is going to happen? If I give an input which is common to both the uh, transistors, then the output will be half of that. That is going to be attenuation not amplification. That is why I said common mode gain will normally be small compared to differential gain. Right. Now, in principle we would like to have a common mode gain which, which is very, very small compared to the differential gain. So, that the ratio which I referred to earlier as the common mode rejection ratio should be a very large number. We would like the amplifier because it is called a difference amplifier, the amplifier should amplify different signals better than common signals. That will shown by the factor CMRR. In principle, if I want to explain in a simpler way, if I apply for example, 100 millivolt to both the inputs, I will get one output that because that 100 millivolts becomes a common mode signal. Okay, let me take this example. I apply 100 millivolt to one of the base and 0 millivolt to the other base. I understand we have calculated also the gain of the difference amplifier let us say is around 100. We got about 87 in our example. Let us take 100 as a very simple number. So, I give 100 millivolt, the gain of the amplifier is 100. Therefore, I will get 10,000 millivolt that is 10 volts at the output. Now, with this condition I will get 10 volts. If I apply 1 volt as a common volt for both the inputs. That is to one input I am applying 1.1 volt, 1.1 volt is 1 volt plus 100 millivolt. To the other transistor I apply only 1 volt. What is the difference between the two inputs? What is the differential input that I have given? It is the same as the previous case just 100 millivolt. This is 1.1 that is 1, the difference is 0 0.1, 0 0.1 volt is nothing but 100 millivolt. So, I have not changed the input at all, the differential input at all. So, what should be the output? Output should again be multiplied by 100 differential gain 
So, 100 into 100 it will again be 10 volts. If this happens in any difference amplifier, then the CMRR is a very large number for this almost infinity. Ideally, if you get the same number, it is infinity, CMRR is infinity. But usually, what happens, it is not, it, it will not happen like that. The transistor will be also affected to some extent due to the common signal that you applied that 1 volt and therefore you will get a finite gain for the common signal and therefore CMRR will not be very large infinity or something it will be a reasonably number small number it is not as high as infinity but it is not very small also it will be reasonably high. Because it is a very important characteristic of a difference amplifier we are interested in making that CMRR as large as possible. If you want a very large CMRR the best way to do that is to have very uh, good current source at the emitter. You must have a current source at the emitter. But you know it is difficult to have constant current source we can introduce it. that is actually what we require is we require a very large resistance and a very large voltage source. If you have a very large resistance and a very large voltage source connected together it can become a reasonably a good current source. So, a good differential amplifier as you can see on the screen has a very large differential gain and very small reasonably small common mode gain AC. So, the common mode rejection ability of the circuit can become considerably improved if you use the common mode gain as pos small as possible ideally 0. So, that means AC which is given as V output by V input beta times RC by RI plus 2 times beta plus 1 RE what we designed last time we see that larger the RE smaller will be AC. If I put larger RE the emitter current itself will decrease. So, if you make Re small a large you must also make Vee large which is equivalent to saying I can replace the Vee and Re by a constant current source. When I do that a constant current source just now I was mentioning to you is nothing but something which is obtained by applying a large voltage across large current or large resistance. So, that the current is almost decided by the internal resistance rather than by the resistance I connect outside. So, you can see in the picture now I have shown in order to increase the differential gain and reduce the common mode gain we want to increase the AC value of the RE to a very large number. For that we use a constant current source circuit. You can see in the picture we have removed the earlier RE and the VEE by a small transistor current okay, circuit. If you look carefully you can see it is nothing but a very simple uh, transistor with a emitter resistance and you have a R1 and R2. So, this is a voltage divider bias and an emitter voltage and this end with reference to this end this is negative therefore, the current is still flowing in the Right, right direction. So, depending upon the R1, R2, there is no base current, base voltage applied in the DC condition or AC condition. So, with, with reference to the voltage divider bias, there is going to be some voltage now here, and there is also a voltage corresponding to VE, and this voltage will be decided by R1, R2, and the emitter current, and therefore, this will be a constant like the current mirror circuit that I mentioned to you earlier. So, this is going to be a constant current the emit collector current here is going to be constant because it is decided by the Re value and the R1 R2 value of the transistor. So, if this is going to be constant the emitter currents also will be constant and the collector current also will be constant and therefore, the difference amplifier will perform well and this constant current effectively is equivalent to a very large resistance connected in series with a very large voltage source and therefore, the very large resistance means the common mode gain will still be reduced and therefore, automatically the CMRR will be increased right. 
we have shown here on the screen the equivalent circuit of yes, the same thing which we have drawn earlier with uh, for the AC condition. For the AC condition the power supply should be grounded here also the V is grounded and you have that con constant current source here along with the corresponding output resistance internal source resistance. So, it is equivalent to high impedance in parallel with a constant current source and we will try to do a small numerical example of how a common mode gain gets reduced when I use a current source. So, we assume the beta 1 beta 2 is about 75 they are equal and equal to 75 and R i 1 R i 2 is around 11 k for the two transistors Q 1 and Q 2. So, if you assume R e is equal to R naught the resistance of the internal resistance of the current source which will be around 200 kilo ohm. So, the common mode gains becomes beta R c divided by R i plus 2 times beta plus 1 R e which we have seen already this beta is 75 R c is 10 kilo ohms in the, in the example given and small r i is 11 kilo ohms and 2 beta plus 1 is 2 times 76 and r e is 200 kilo ohm. If we calculate it, it is coming to about 24.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3. That means, it is a very, very small value. The common mode gain when I use a constant current source is found to be very, very small. So, anything if I divide the differential gain by such a small number you know the 10 power minus 3 the denominator will go to the numerator which will become 1000 times. So, thereby you would find having a fractional or smaller than 1 current gain for the common mode amplifier common mode scheme will certainly multiply the ratio of the differential gain to the common mode or the CMRR. So, the CMRR will become a very very large number. Now, having discussed about the difference amplifier, now we should look at applications of the difference amplifier. One of the very well known application of the difference amplifier is in integrated circuit design especially in operational amplifier. Most of the linear ICs will have differential amplifier as the input stage. There is a very specific reason why it is done. Now, what do you mean by integrated circuit before I go into that? So, what is an integrated circuit? In an integrated circuit, you on a silicon chip, you try to integrate the different electrical functions, functionalities like devices like transistors, diodes, resistors, capacitors, all together. And then you can form on the same silicon wafer a whole circuit. A circuit is made up of resistors, capacitors, diodes, transistors. So, any one of these can also be made with a silicon. Therefore, John Kilby, for example, and Robert Noyce really thought independently why a whole circuit cannot be done on a silicon chip by isolating some area as resistance, some other area as a diode, transistor, capacitor, etcetera. So, integrate all of them and perform only connect interconnect the de de component with some fine metallic wire like gold wire or something. Then what you have on the silicon is no more a single device like a transistor or a diode, but a whole circuit. So, it not only makes the device very, very compact, very, very small, but it improves the performance enormously. How do I say that? See, every transistor circuit, semiconductor device is very sensitive to temperature as one of the example I can tell you. So, when the temperature changes, the performance of the circuit will also change. Now, if I have in the integrated circuits, if I make all the transistors and resistors on the same silicon chip, you can imagine the circuit will be very, very small and the components will be 
only few micrometers apart from each other. So, a two transistors for example, can be separated only by a few microns, micron means one micrometer. If that happens, if there is going to be a temperature change, then you would find the two transistors will have almost identical conditions when they are formed in the transistor in the on the silicon chip and therefore they will almost have identical characteristics so when there is a temperature change both will be affected equally hence if i have a differential amplifier as the input stage whatever that is same or identical to the two transistors will be rejected by the factor which we already know the CMRR common mode rejection ratio. So, when I have difference amplifier as the input stage you find the common voltages like the noise signals, the pickup signals etcetera will be completely rejected and if there is any change due to temperature that also will not affect too much because the two transistors at the input stage are almost identical and therefore they will have similar characteristics and if one increases the other decreases exactly and therefore when they combine together you do not get anything at all 0 volts will be the output because it is matched. So, this feature is one of the reason why difference amplifiers are used in integrated circuit design. There again is another important reason and that is in an integrated circuit design it is very difficult to make capacitors. How do you make resistors on a silicon chip? It is very simple. If I dope the silicon with a pentavalent or a trivalent impurity you would find the resistance will decrease it will become either p type or a n type semiconductor and a n type or a p type semiconductor has got finite conductivity at room temperature and therefore they are basically some something like resistors so by controlling the doping i'll be able to get any magnitude of resistance on a silicon chip i can always make a transistor or a diode on the silicon chip by selectively making some area p type and then making n type over and above that or three layers means n p n or p n p as the case may be you can generate on the silicon chip therefore you can get transistors easily within very small regions you can get diode within very small regions you can get resistance by just simply doping the semiconductor in some region and you can also get capacitance how do you get capacitance capacitance is obtained by using diode you know diode is a pn junction uh, device and there is a depletion region between the at the junction and the p type and the n type because they are conducting they will act like metal plates and the depletion layer in between acts like a insulator or a dielectric and so what you have here is a capacitance we have seen that earlier we also discussed about the different types of diodes like the wear actor diode where this property of the capacitance of the junction is exploited in different applications so now you have possibilities on the silicon wafer to make every type of electrical component that you want you can make resistors you can make diodes you can make transistors you can make capacitors but there is one other problem see when you prepare that device the doping will be controlled by the pressure and the flow and things temperature of the process where you let in a phosphorus pentoxide or whatever for doping so the flow rate and temperature will all be controlled and because silicon is a very small region one inch or two inch wafer for example then you find on that you can make enormous number thousands of 
transistors and capacitors and resistors. But if I take one single set, you would find the doping is the same whether I want to make a resistor or a capacitor or a diode. The doping will be de only de decided by the parameters like the temperature, pressure, etc., and that will be the same throughout the wafer. And therefore, what is going to happen is that under the same condition, if I want smaller resistance, that means I want more conductivity, I should dope more. But I cannot dope for longer period because the diode will and the transistor will not perform well, they require a very specific level of doping. And therefore, the only way I can do that is by increasing the area for the resistance for the given flow rate, given pressure and things like that. I have to increase the area of the resistor, region of the resistor on the silicon chip. And therefore, if I want smaller and smaller resistances, then I have to use larger and larger area on the silicon chip. Similarly, if I want a capacitance, again larger capacitance if you want, you have to have larger area for the capacitance. And therefore, you find the problem on the silicon chip now has become a problem of real estate, something like real estate. The area available is very small and you want to put different types of devices on that like resistors, capacitors, diodes and transistors. So, you have to allocate different regions for the different components and the values of resistors if they are small, you will have larger resistance larger areas for that similarly for capacitors. Whereas, for transistors and diode you can do it with a very very small region and therefore, the you would like to avoid making use of capacitances if possible low value resistances because they occupy larger space in that space you can as well make more number of transistors and diodes and therefore, in all integrated circuit the whole philosophy of the circuit design has now shifted from any component can be used for transistors. You now say if possible design your circuit only with resistors, diodes and transistors with almost no capacitance and none inductance, no, not even one inductance can be allowed. So, you want to avoid capacitance and you want to avoid inductances. So, you can only have in all your circuits diodes, transistors and high value resistors, these are all what is only possible. So, the philosophy itself is changed, but how do I make an amplifier without a capacitor? You can immediately see one good scheme of making an amplifier without capacitance is the differential amplifier, you saw that there was no capacitors used in the difference amplifier. So, if I use the difference amplifier as the input stage and couple it to other later stages for higher gain, you would find I can do away with the need for large coupling capacitors to take care of very wide bandwidth for the amplifier. So, in the case of op amps operational amplifiers, the input stage is a difference amplifier and because it is difference amplifier, why do we use coupling capacitors in a normal amplifier? You want to only couple the AC signal and block the DC voltage. Again you can see in the difference amplifier without any capacitor you are able to do that because the amplifier responds only to the difference in the input signals. I can use a difference amplifier and later coupled to another stage of amplifier without worrying about using a capacitor to isolate the DC because this amplifier itself is responding only to the difference between the two inputs and therefore, the only difference that you are going to have is only with reference to the signal and all the DC will be equal and therefore, they will be eliminated. So, an input amplifier, input stage of an integrated circuit amplifier will have to be a difference amplifier because thereby we can avoid the necessity for large value 
coupling capacitors to be integrated in the say, circuit in the silicon wafer and there that is the reason why difference amplifiers are very very useful and that is why we discussed in this lecture about difference amplifier. You know in the present lecture what I discussed today is I took a uh, example of a difference amplifier which requires two transistors and one uh, emitter resistance and two collector resistances and we discussed the DC bias condition how to calculate the various currents and the voltages and we also saw by use drawing the equivalent circuit how to obtain the AC gain for the common mode signal and for the different signal and things like that. Finally, we also saw how the common mode rejection ratio of the difference amplifier can be improved by introducing a current source in the emitter circuit instead of a voltage source VEE and RE. Now we in the next class onwards we will start looking at the integrated circuits their advantages over the normal discrete circuits and how an operational amplifier can be used for different applications. Thank you very much. Thank you.